to the top 10 best-selling albums now. And uh, first thing I can tell you is that Brian Ferry, after four and a half months, is up seven places. The Vital Idol, no getting away from him, he moves up three. These four have excitingly stayed in exactly the same place as they were last week. And after 17 weeks in the chart, Madonna's Like a Virgin is brand new at NUM, number one even, <laughs> replacing Kate Bush. I'm going to pieces. Uh, Kate Bush, who by a tragic coincidence is next to me. I'm sorry you're number two this week, Kate. Well, I think that's pretty good. It's myself. better than being number three. <laughs> yeah, right. What do you feel about Madonna and her sort of um, the marketing of the image like that? It seems very different to the way you've gone at things. I don't know much about Madonna. I saw her on Live Aid and I thought she was really good. She's meant to be a good artist, it's true, but she, she seems to have gone for the sort of sex symbol uh, approach to success. We'll talk about your album. I can tell there's a look on your face. You, you, <laughs> <laughs> you're a very determined girl. You went away on your own terms to make this LP, didn't you? Yes, I, I wanted to make sure that uh, we got our own studio together. That was the next move, really. I spent a lot of time on the last album, moving from studio to studio. And uh, now we've got our own place and everything is brilliant. It makes such a difference. Is it difficult choosing the right sort of gear to put in there, the right people to work with in that studio and the location, of course? I think it, it's really good because you can get everything you want in one studio, which isn't always easy in a London studio. Mm. What were you looking for? What makes your studio special for you? Well, it's got all the environmental things that we want, the right kind of sounding rooms, and we've got all the outboard equipment and the right kind of speakers and everything. Mm. It's uh, what we want, which is why we did it. <laughs> you say we all the time. It's, it's very much, though, a very solo sort of thing. I mean, you've produced the thing, you've written the thing. Um, even though you have other musicians playing on it, you're calling the shots, aren't you? I'm in control, but there's no way I could do it by myself. I rely on very good engineers and musicians and people around me to advise me. Yes, how do you keep tabs on whether you're losing track of reality, you know, whether you're getting too self-indulgent? You mean in context of an album? Yeah. I think you just have to rely on a voice inside you saying that it's getting better and everything that you do to it does make it better and not worse. Mm. Actually, a lot of critics have felt, uh, well, the ones I've seen, that there are some very, very commercial bits in this as well, that uh, maybe you were aware that the last LP perhaps did go away from the mainstream a bit. Do you agree with them? Um, I don't feel it, it went away from the mainstream. I mean, I, whenever you make an album, you just do it and you hope all the songs are good and that you're trying to express what you want at that time, and I feel that I've done that certainly with the last three albums. Mm. Let's talk about a track on this LP. You've done a video. Now, whether it means it's going to be a single at some stage, we, we don't know as yet. It's called Cloud Busting, and a rather unusual story behind the song. So can you tell us the story to set up the video that we're going to see? Yes, it's very much inspired by a book that I found on a shelf about nine years ago, and it's written by a man called Peter Reich, and the book's called A Book of Dreams. And it's very much written from a child's point of view about his father. You see the book in the video if you're clever. Yes, right. yes, don't blink or you'll miss it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's really about the magic of that relationship and, and how much his father meant to him. Um, and they have a very special thing they can do. They go up onto a hill with a machine that his father's built and they make it rain. Kate Bush and cloud busting, rather obviously. Donald Sutherland, how did you get him to be in your video? Well, we rang him up and said, would he be interested, and said yes. And what was, he, what was he like to work with? I think that's the question. <laughs> I think that is the question. He was brilliant, absolutely brilliant, and he was such a help to me as well. Fantastic. A real uh, honour to work with him. And that's the new single as well, isn't it? Yes, it is. OK, thanks for coming in. Bobby Womack, again, the man who wrote mm -hmm. It's All Over Now, and the classic, The, the Poet.